In Galactic Era, you are a space-firing civilization venturing out into the galaxy. You will explore and colonize distant planets, advance your technologies, trade with allies and battle your enemies. Before meeting others though, you must decide upon your morals. Will you respect others and cooperate peacefully, or will you strive only for your own goals? The object of the game is to score as many destiny points as possible. You do this mainly by having a large population and otherwise by fulfilling various conditions and goals. The game is played over 8 rounds. Each round players first move their spaceships and fight battles. Then players develop their civilization, such as by growing population, researching and building ships. Then players can trade technologies and finally the players can score some points for the round. In Galactic Era you have a map consisting of multiple of these sector tiles like this which are double-sided. Each sector tile shows the various stars you can take in the game and also various space anomalies. You also play a star people, which gives you a certain special effect. And for that star people, you must also choose an alignment. So you play it either on the light side or you play it on the dark side. You have your population in your color. Each time you take a star, you place a certain number of discs on that star. The more discs you get on the map, the better because that is then your score at the end of the game. You also have your home star cylinder, which is this, which always goes into the center of your starting sector. You also have your spaceships. Some spaceships you show as individual pieces like these, but you can also have fleets of hidden ships, in which case you use these numbered chips you place these numbered chips face down in a stack and then you take one of your fleet counters like this and put it face down on top to determine the type of fleet. You also have your five technology areas here which you can level up during the game. These are military, spirituality, propulsion, robotics and genetics. If you reach the highest level in a technology you become very powerful in that aspect of the game. You also have your diplomatic relationships with other players represented by these counters. With each player you can either be at peace or you can be at war. The game is played over eight rounds. The first two rounds are an era of light, then you have four rounds, an era of darkness, and then another era of light. In the eras of light you score points for more peaceful activities such as researching, in the era of darkness, you score points for such things as being at war, winning space battles, or taking stars from other players. How you score exactly is determined by your galactic story, which you can exchange for every game. Then you have the turn order, which is determined by these counters, and which you can change during the course of the game. This is how you set up a game of Galactic Era. First take the round and point track and put it to the side of the playing area. Then select one of the three Galactic Story tiles and place it here. Then, unless you're playing this for the first time, select one of the eight Galactic Goal tiles and place it here. Place the round marker here on the first position. Then you need to set up the board. First, you take one of these sector tiles and put it in the middle of the board. Each sector tile has two sides, an A side and a B side. This is the B side. The B side usually has more nebula hexes than the A side. It doesn't matter with which side you play. Place one sector tile for each player in the game next to the sector central sector like this if you're playing with three players. If you're playing with more than three players please check the configuration in the rulebook. Then 
If you have gaps here between the sector tiles, you will need to place a pair of wormhole counters here. Take one pair of wormhole counters and place them in the middle of the open edge here where the hex is with the dot in it, like this. And then for this open area, like this. And for this open area, like this. If you're playing with more players, these gaps will be filled up with players. In a six player game, you don't have any wormholes. Every player then takes the home star cylinder of his color and places it in the star in the center of his home star sector like this. Then you'll need to add the neutral star counters. There are three types of neutral star counters. Uninhabited, primitive, and advanced. Select two of each type for your sector and if you have a sector with eight stars, you can see the number at the bottom hex of the sector. Then select a third uninhabited star counter. Turn these face down. Shuffle them and place one on each star in the sector except the central star. Then when everybody has done this, do the center sector Select three of each kind for the center sector. Turn these face down. Shuffle them and put one on each star, including the center star. You'll have some left over. Put these to the side and don't look at them for the rest of the game. Then take the 10 relic counters, shuffle them and put one on each star in the center sector, like this. Again, you'll have some counters left over. Just put them to the side and don't look at them. Each player should have a population track, like this in their color, a technology track, two star people tiles, and a player reference card. Line up the population discs in your color on the population track like this, except for the spot in the bottom right center, in the bottom right corner, the six. Take the additional disc you have left over and put it on the zero position of the scoring track like this. Take three individual ship pieces and place them next to your home star in the center sector like this. Every player also gets a set of war piece counters in all colors except their own. So in this example, I'm yellow. I'm playing against red and purple. So I get one red and one purple counter. Place these with the piece side face, face, face up. Then distribute the turn order counters depending on the number of players. So if you're playing with three players, use the numbers one to three. If you're playing with four players, use the numbers one to four. Shuffle these and deal out one counter to each player. Then take the domination cards, shuffle them, and deal out one card to each player. Each player may look at their domination card, but can't show it to other players. Then everybody picks one of the two star people tiles they got. When everybody has done that, everybody picks an alignment to play their star people on, either the light side or the dark side. You do this by placing the tile beneath the table, picking a side, and everybody reveals their choice simultaneously. Take the five cubes you've got, place them on the leftmost column of the technology track on the one position. Make any changes according to your star people. Then you need to add your sector starting bonus. Each sector gives a starting bonus as marked in the center hex of the sector. This can be a technology level, some ships, or some extra population. If the technology level is one that you are already starting with at level two because of your star people, you don't add the levels instead you choose a different technology field to get level two in instead. 
when everybody is so far made all their all their um, starting advantages anybody who still has any in individual choices to make do them in turn order now you're ready to go one more thing everybody gets a complete set of technology counters so five square counters in the five technology fields like these and a plus one and a minus one counters you will need these counters later on in the growth phase you play over eight rounds each round you do the following you'll find a round summary on your player reference card here the first thing that happens is that in turn order every player does a movement and combat phase which means every player moves all their ships fights all their battles then the next player then the next so on your turn you can move any or all of your ships as many as you like the range of your ships is determined by propulsion see the number in the bottom right corner if you have propulsion at level one this means each of your ships can move three hexes so you move each of your ships if a ship ends its move in a hex with a neutral star counter you can secretly look at that counter without showing it for any, to anybody else what you cannot do is you can't look at that star counter while you're just passing through likewise if you're in the center sector you can look at the star counter and the ancient rally counter there you can look at any counters you're standing at any time during the game even if it's not your turn if a ship enters a nebula hex it uses up two of its range if a ship starts its move in a nebula hex it gains two extra range then you also have the neutron star hexers the neutron star hexes are impassable unless you have propulsion five or higher these are asteroid systems which are used later in the game in the growth phase you can also move through wormholes each wormhole hex is considered adjacent to the other wormhole hex of the same color so you can move like this moves cost one like here to here once you've finished your movement you check to see if you're in the same hex with some other player you're at war with so in this example I'm at war with red I have to fight a battle here how do you fight a battle it's very simple you count the number of your ships you have there and multiply that with your combat value as determined by your level in military so let's say I have military level four that means I have a combat value per ship of three red has a military level one thus a combat level combat value of one my total is three his total is two I have the higher total so I win the battle as winner of the battle I determine how many ships the lo loser loses the lo this can be all of their ships some of their ships or none of their ships if uh, whatever the loser loses I lose his half so if I remove two ships I remove half of that which is one ship myself if it's an odd number I round it up so if he loses one ship I have to lose lose one ship myself because I can't lose half of ships any ships left over must then retreat to the nearest hex the loser can choose to retreat where to retreat a nearest hex without hostile ships if I win a battle with three to one superiority though let's say in this in this case I have two ships here combat value three each is total of six the other side has a combat value of total of two so that's three to one ratio then I can remove all opposing ships without any losses of myself of my own the defending player may also retreat before combat happens if the defending player either has a higher level in propulsion than the attacker this means faster ships or he has a higher level in spirituality than the attacker this means he has the psychic ability to see what's going to happen then he can retreat before the combat and then nothing happens when you're fighting with fleets and combat happens then you reveal all the ships and the type of fleet each fleet type gives an advantage some for combat so for example 
For example, you have the A fleet, which gives one extra combat value per ship, and you have the C fleet, which gives two extra combat value per ship if you're against the A fleet. The D fleet gives an extra movement range. The E fleet allows you to retreat before combat regardless of your technology levels. And the B fleet gives you an advantage when taking stars. If you retreat before combat, then you have to decide to do this before any player reveals their ships they have in their fleets. So you have to decide to retreat before any ships are revealed. Once the player whose turn it is has finished all his moves, uh, all his combat, then his turn is over. I need to say how you handle fleets. So fleets are these things, stacks of chips with numbers on them in the fleet counter. At the start of your turn only, you can create new fleets and only at your own star. So the ships must be at a star of your own. You can take any number of these ship pieces and then place the same total in black chips like this face down and then select one of your unused fleet counters and place it on top like this. You can also swap fleet counters of existing fleets between two stars if they're both at a star of yours. So you can exchange them like this. During your turn, you can dissolve a fleet anytime. That means you can take this fleet and remove it and replace it with ship pieces in the same amount. Unless it's the D fleet and you've already used the advantage of the D fleet. You can also transfer ships between fleets if they're in the same hex. So let's say these ships are in the same hex, then I could move one chip from the, uh, to the other and vice versa. Be sure in any case though that no ship moves any further than the range it is allowed to move. You also have wormholes which you can move across. So wormholes are simply adjacent hexes. So you move from one hole to the other as if these two hexes were adjacent. After everybody has finished their turn, in the move combat phase comes the growth phase. In the growth phase, everybody clicks two of their over counters like these, and one of their square counters, which is either a turn order change counter like this, or one of the five technology counters. So everybody picks two of those and two oval and one square counters and places them face down like this, hiding the other counter so you can't see. When everybody has made their choice, everybody simultaneously reveals their choice and then we resolve them. The first thing that can happen is that somebody has picked their switch alignment counter. This is the switch alignment counter. If you pick the switch alignment counter, you simply switch your alignment, your star people tile over to the other side. If you are at war with somebody, then you're automatically at peace. So you're a new person, everybody sees a new side of you, so everybody is assumed to be at peace with you. You do this immediately when you reveal the counter, so not in turn order like the remaining counters. Then you check if somebody is changing the turn order. So this is a turn order change counter. You add the plus one or the minus one here to the number on your turn order tile like this. So one plus one is two. That means you swap counters with player number two. If you pick the other counter, the minus one, then you go the other direction. So two minus one is one. That means you swap with the one. If you're already at the one, then the minus one does nothing because one minus one is zero, that is nothing. And if you already have the highest one among the players, so the three in this case, and you select the plus one, then three plus one is four. We don't have four players, so that also does nothing. If multiple people select a turn order change counter, then there's a certain order in which this happens. First, in turn order, you do all the minus ones. So starting with one, two, three, you do the minus ones. Then in reverse turn order, so starting with the highest, three, two, one, you do the plus ones. So when everybody has finished doing the turn order change counters, then you do all the remaining growth actions each player has selected. Each player can do their growth actions in any order they like. I'll now explain the various growth actions, what they do. 
you can find the icons of the growth actions here on the icon index in this section of the icon index right here. Here's an explanation of the various growth action counters. The first growth action I will explain is the gain star action. This is the gain star action. This means I get some star where I currently have a ship standing. So let's say I have a ship standing here at this star. Then I may possibly get this star if I fulfill the conditions for taking that star. Look at the table at the bottom of your star people tile to see what the conditions are for taking a star. First, you see a name here in the left column describing, giving the term. Then you see what the possible targets are. So for example, an uninhabited star or a primitive star or something else. Then the next column, you see the number of ships you need to take that star. And in the final column on the right, you see the result. So in this case, I'm on the dark side. I'm trying to take a primitive star, which is this counter, a brown counter. It says here I need one ship to take it. I have one ship here. And the result is I get two population there. Every time I take population from my track, I take it from the lowest numbers in the bottom right corner and place it where it needs to go on the board. I remove the star counter and that's the action then. There are other stars I could also take on the dark side. There are the uninhabited stars, which is, let's say, I need an uninhabited one. This is an uninhabited one. I can take an uninhabited one also with one ship, uh, but then I only get one population. If I were on the light side, I would have the same option with the uninhabited stars, but I have a different option. First of all, I don't have an option to take a primitive star, but I have an option to take an advanced star. That is these. If I have a ship there, then I remove the counter and I place three of my discs there instead. So that's a bit better than the primitive star. I can also take stars of other players. To take a star of another player, I first need to be at war with that player, otherwise I can't take that star. Then the general rule is I need to have more ships than discs. So in this case, I'm at war with red. Red has two discs here. I have three ships here. Three ships is more than two discs, so I can take the star. The number of discs here I get depends if I am on the light side and I'm liberating, or if I'm on the dark side and I'm conquering. If I'm conquering, it's somewhat of a bloody affair, so not everybody survives, so I replace the number of discs only with one disc of my own. Red gets his disc back, puts them on the calculation track. If, however, I'm liberating, then, because I'm on the light side, then the people welcome me, and it's not so bloody, that means I get the same number of discs of my color as they were placed there beforehand. Also, when I take a star of another player, I get to take one of his technology levels. So, if red has something higher, some technology level higher that I do not have, then I can take one technology level in that field of my choice. If this were a star with six population, I could even take two levels. Note that uh, the players on the dark side can also take advanced civilizations, but they have to conquer them. That means they need to have four ships to take an advanced civilization, and they only get one disc there. So that's the gain star action. This is the gain star action. Then you have the research action. This is the microscope. For the research action you do, you must always select an accompanying technology field tile. So you must always select the oval research icon counter and a square technology counter. You can't do one. You can't, this alone does nothing and this alone does nothing either. You need to have the pair of these two. This simply means I go up one level in this technology field. So in this example, I go up one level in genetics. That's research. Then you have the build ships action, which is this. In the build ships action, you build a number of spaceships. What is the number of spaceships you get? You look at your technology track and look at your highest numbered free spot. Then you look at the interval. There's a ship interval beneath that a ship range, which gives you the number of ships you get for having that much population on the board. 
So on this example, I have 19 population on the board. That means I'm in the ship interval of five ships. So I get five spaceships and I can place them on the board. Where can I place them? That depends what kind of stars you have. So you need a star with four or more population to place ships. Your home star always counts as six population for all purposes, so you can always place it at the home star. Otherwise, if you have some other star with four population, let's say this one here, then I could also place some of my ships there. I can split up my ships between those locations. I can also create new fleets when building ships. So instead of placing them as ship pieces, I can place the same amount of discs face down to where I can build ships and I can put an unused counter on them. If there already is a fleet at a star where I can build ships, then I can just add chips to that fleet. You don't need to show where you're building how many ships, you just need to show the players your total number of chips you're building and then you can distribute them in any way without showing them among the stars where you're allowed to build. You get additional ships when building ships if you're visiting asteroid fields. So these are asteroid fields. For every asteroid field you're visiting, you can build one extra ship. And you get bonus for building ships through your robotics. So for example, at robotics level three, you get three extra ships. That's the build ships action. The final action is the grow population action. With this action, you can increase the size of your stars. To do this, you go through each one of your stars and check if it can still grow or not. What's the growth limit for a star? The growth limit for a star is the distance to the nearest player-owned star, regardless if it's your own star or a star owned by somebody else. So let's say in this example, I go through all my stars. I start, let's say, with Mars, home, this star here. Mars has two population. The distance to the nearest player-owned star is here, my home star in Alpha Draconis. The distance is one. It has more disks than the range, so it's already at the limit, over the limit actually, so it can't grow anymore. Then I have my other star here, Markov. Markov has two population disks. What's the distance to the nearest player-owned star here? The distance is three. It doesn't matter if it's your own color or that of another player. So three is the distance, two is the population here, two is less than three. That means I get one extra population disk. I only grow by one, not more than one. Then I check here. This star has four population. The distance is true. So can't grow anymore. Here, two population. Distance three, so I get one, one there too. Here, two population, distance three, I get one population there. And I can, and my home star can grow as well if the nearest player owned star is far away, which is usually not is, so six, distance one, cannot grow anymore. That includes the first portion of growing population, the so-called normal or natural growth. Then I get additional growth through my level in genetics. Genetics gives you so-called bonus population. Bonus population works like this. You take the number of bonus population disks you get through genetics. Say at genetics four, I get three disks. You take these three disks into hand and you distribute these among your stars regardless of limits, but you only can place one per star. So I'm getting three disks. I could place one here, one here, and even one at my home star if I want to. Note that I can completely disregard any population growth limits for the growth action. A few more things. When I take a star in the home, in the center of a sector, there's always this ancient relic there. So if I manage to take a star in the center, then I reveal the relic at that moment and then apply the effect of that relic at that moment. You will find the effects of the relics on the player reference card here. Some relics have a permanent effect. That means that effect always applies to whoever is the current owner of the star. And then you have one-time effects, usually a technology level. That means you get 
that effect once when you take the star. And thereafter, you remove the counter and it has no effect. Another thing, you can also take home stars of another player. So let's say I'm taking the home star of red. Here. I also, again, need more ships than population. A home star always counts as six, so I need seven population. When I take the home star of another player, that home star is not gone, but it just relocates to a different star. That's called home star evacuation. When a player loses his home star, he relocates his home star to, his, uh, to one of his other stars with the highest population. And he can choose which if there are multiple. Let's say he has two stars with three population. Three population is the highest he has, then he can relocate his cylinder there. He removes all the discs that were at that star and place his cylinder there. If there's any discs left where he evacuated from, those are removed too. Okay? That's home star evacuation. One more thing about the growth phase. Some star peoples or other effects give you free actions. You can execute these actions anytime during your growth phase in any order together with your other growth actions of that phase. This concludes the growth phase. In the technology phase, players can trade technology with each other. All players simultaneously discuss any possible trades with each other and execute them. In order to trade with another player, you need first of all need to be at peace with that player, and secondly, you need to be in contact with that player. This means you're either visiting one of their stars with your ship, or that player is visiting your star with a ship of his, or you're meeting ship to ship somewhere in the middle of space. Then you can talk what levels to get from the other player. You can only get a level in a technology field where that player has a higher level than you do. In this example, I have military level 3 and red has military level 2, so I can teach one level of military to red. Red, on the other hand, has propulsion 3 and I have propulsion 2, so I could learn one level of propulsion from red. If we both agree to the trade, both what we're getting and what we're teaching the other player, then we execute that trade. You can only do one trade and only get one level per round. When everybody has done their trade, then the final phase of the game is the scoring phase. In the scoring phase, you get points depending on what the galactic story is that you for this game. What always applies is that you get one point for having the same alignment as the era. For the other, for each galactic story, please check the rules at the back of the rule book. So, some more things you need to know. First of all, advanced fleet tactics. When you get higher levels in military, some levels will give you a so-called advanced fleet tactics. That is this counter. You take one such counter for every advanced fleet tactic you get and place it on one of the square spots of your fleet section of your technology track. You can place it either with the times two side face up or with the plus three points side face up. If you place it on the, with the times two side face up, that means the special effect of that fleet type is doubled. For example, the fleet A gives plus one combat value per ship. If you select the times two tile for that fleet, that means your fleet from now on always gets plus two combat value per ship. If you place it on the D fleet instead, for example, then instead of plus one range, you would get plus two range. If you place it on the C fleet, you would get plus four combat value per ship versus an A fleet instead of plus two. If you place it on the B fleet, you get instead of 50% ships extra versus a star, you get 100% ships extra versus a star. Note that 50% ships extra versus a star is rounded down. So if you have three ships, that means you would have four ships 
effectively versus the star. If you double the E-fleet, the E-fleet is normally you can retreat before combat. Then instead you get the effect that you can retreat after revealing. It says here at the bottom, retreat after reveal. That means you can wait to see what the attacker has in his fleets and then decide to retreat instead of retreating before the reveal. If you choose to place the plus three points side face up instead, that means instead that you get plus three points whenever you win a battle with that fleet. Note if you have that plus three twice for the same battle, you don't get plus six. You still only get plus three at most, three extra points for winning a battle. Then we have some special effects given by propulsion, higher levels and for propulsion. First of all, you have Stargate movement. Stargate movement, Stargate level one, means you can jump, similar to a wormhole, between stars of your own that each have three populations. So for example, here this ship is, is at a star with three population, and here's another star of mine with four population. That means I can jump between these stars as if they were adjacent. Yeah? At Stargate 2 movement, you, you can not only do this with your own stars, you can also do that with any star on the board except those of players you are at war with. That means you can jump to neutral stars or to stars of other players you're not at war with and vice versa. The next thing that uh, some technology gives you is spirituality. Spirituality gives you so-called remote views. That's the big number in the bottom right corner. For every remote view, then on your turn during the movement phase, you can look at one face down counter on the board, regardless of distance. So if, for example, I have spirituality three, I can look at, I have two remote views. That means I can look at two counters on the board. I can look, for example, at this counter, uh-huh. And I can look at this counter, uh-huh. So you note that you need to look at, use up a separate remote view to look at the relic of a star. So if you want to look at both, at a star in the center, then you need to, if you want to look at the neutral star counter, you need one remote view. And if you want to look at the relic counter, you also need one remote view for that. The next concept is blocking. Blocking means whenever you do one of your growth actions, you can't use any hexes of yours where there are hostile ships. So for example, I want to use this asteroid field to give me an extra ship when I'm building ships, but there is a ship of a player I'm at war with, the red player, so I can't use that asteroid field. I want to place my ships here at this star with four population, but I can't do it because there is a hostile ship here. I want to grow a star where there are but if there's a hostile ship, again, I cannot grow that star there. Not, not with normal population, nor bonus population. In fact, I have to deduct the population of any stars where there are hopple ships from my total population, virtually using this transparent token, to count down the number of ships I get. So for example, red is blocking this star with one population, and he's blocking this star with four population, so I have to count down five population from my total here, which is 25 to 20. And that gives me less population for building ships. Blocking can also be used to block movement through wormholes and through stargates. Blocking through wormholes works like this. If I use a wormhole where there is a hostile ship at the end of the wormhole, then I have to finish my movement there where I exit the wormhole. Blocking through, blocking stargate movement blocks the entire movement, which is slightly different. So if I want to use a stargate movement and there's a hostile ship, then I cannot jump away. And I also cannot jump to any stars where there is a hostile ship with stargate movement. Blocking also happens for additional actions. I need to mention additional actions as well. So, you can get additional actions to the normal th two actions you get by having a star with five or more population. That is not your home star. So let's say I have this star with five population. It's not my home star. 
So I have the option to buy an additional action on my turn of the growth phase for three points. You can see what the various star effects do here on this section of the player reference card. So if I want to buy a third action, they cost me three points. If I want to buy a fourth action, I need, I need, I need, a, I need another star with five population to do that. I can do that. I can do a fourth action, but that would cost me then six points. Note that your points are allowed to go into the negative as far as you want. There's no restriction on that. The next thing is declaration of war. How do you declare war? Well, players on the light side are very restricted in declaring war. First of all, players on the light side can never be at war with each other. If you're on the light side, the only player you can be at war with are players on the dark side. But you can only declare war on players on the dark side under very specific circumstances. I'll ex explain. So let's say a player on the dark side, red, wants to take this star. I'm in the same hex as red. And red wants to take a primitive civilization or innocent population. Then I can prevent that by declaring war in that moment and that action is blocked. Remember. Any growth action you want to do anywhere is blocked where there's a hostile ship. That includes gaining stars. That means red cannot do this action and he is blocked and we are at war. And then red has to do his action somewhere else. Whenever uh, somebody blocks your action in the growth phase, you can try to do that same action then somewhere else, against our action somewhere else, if you have the option to do so. You don't automatically lose that option. Anyway, back to declaring war. You can also, what also counts as innocent population are advanced civilizations. So let's say Red wants to take this star here with an advanced civilization using four ships of his. That too counts as innocent population, which I can block if I'm there, which I can use to declare war on Red and block him. You can also block the conquest of fellow players who are also on the light, say, in the same way. That's written on here on the star people tile. Players on the dark side, however, have much more freedom to declare war. First of all, they can declare war anytime and on anybody during their movement of the move combat phase. Secondly, they can declare war on anybody whenever they want to conquer something, conquer a star, or when they want to block anything. Then they can immediately declare war. The next thing are the, is the domination cards. So you have these secret objective cards that you get at the start of the game. Each domination card has two sections, a top section, which we call the A section, and a bottom section, which we call the B section. You can score either for the top or for the bottom section when you play a card. You can play a card anytime you like and get the points for that but you only get the points for the top section if you fulfill whatever condition it says here. If you fulfill this condition, then you get the points as shown in the top right corner here, and you get an immediate special effect, an immediate one-time effect as described here below. If you cannot score for the top or don't want to, then you can score for the bottom instead. The bottom is just straight up points depending on certain things you have or don't have. Often it is a technology level. If it's the technology icon and this icon for points here that you simply score your level and that technology in points. So for example, in this example, I score for my military level in points. I have military level four, I get four points. You can find an explanation, a detailed explanation of every card in the back of the rule book. You get two of these cards during the course of the game. You start with one card, then you play one card any time. If you score it for the top, you place it on the top left side of your tech track. If you, place, if you play it for the A side, you place it on the top left side of the technology track here. If you play it for the B, B effect instead, you place it in the bottom left hand corner of your technology track instead. You can only play one card for the A effect, then the other has to be a B. Alternatively, you can also play both cards for the B effect. Immediately after playing your first card, you draw your second card, and then that you can play any time during the course of the game. 
There is one special situation that may happen, is that the population from a star may become completely removed through various special effects. If that happens, the star simply becomes an uninhabited star and can be taken again using the colonize action as normal. Then you have every player gets one of these tiles. This is the emergency reserve tile. Whenever you lose your home star or have to evacuate your home star, uh, then you get immediately six ships at your new home star location. Like this, wherever that may be. You also get your six ships for your emergency reserve if any time during the game you lose a star and you then have two stars less than every other player in the game. Then you also activate your emergency reserve and get your six ships. You can only remove your emergency reserve once per game. Then if you do, turn it face down and that's it. One more thing about home star evacuation. You can also voluntarily home evacuate your home star, namely when there is a hostile ship in the same sex as your home star, same hex as your home star, then you can voluntarily evacuate your home star using the normal rules. Note that you cannot evacuate to a star of yours when you're doing home star evacuation where there are hostile ships. So it always depends. Uh, where the hostile ships are and you have to go to one of the stars that doesn't have any hostile ships. If you have no star you can't evacuate to, then you simply choose any empty hex in the same sector to evacuate to. You're going to a rogue planet or something like that there. And that's a new star location then for the rest of the game. A few more things. First of all, when you research a technology, at level 6, that you already have at level 6, then instead of a level, you gain the special effect as shown to the right of that level on your technology track. Please look up the special effect in the rulebook. At the back end of the rulebook, you'll find the technology tables where you can see that effect. This also applies when you get a level through Ancient Relic uh, for technology field, you already have a level 6. Then another thing I need to mention are so-called dummy chips. Every player has a set of five chips, of these hidden fleet chips, with a zero on them. You can add these chips to any of your stacks anytime when you're creating or adding chips to a stack. This is just to make the stack appear larger and to confuse uh, your opponent so that they can't uh, deduct uh, what, how many ships, you, so they can't guess how many ships are in that fleet depending on the number of chips. You can only have five of these chips. You can take them out or add them anytime to your fleets during the game uh, when it's your turn and uh, you have to show what you're adding or removing. Then another thing I want to mention is that you also have a combat summary. So on one side of this player reference card, you have an icon index where you can see all the icons. On the other side, you have a combat summary where it gives you step by step what you need to do to resolve a battle. At the end of the 8th round, after scoring has been done for the last round, you do the game end scoring. You add up points for the following things. First of all, you add up add points for population. You check the highest free number on your population track and add that to your score. Note that the population, that the point numbers in the top row are higher. That means you get two points for every population in the top row or even three points at the very end. Then you play any remaining domination cards you have not played that and add points for that. Then you add any points for the galactic goal, depending on which galactic goal you're playing with. And finally you add points for ship majority per sector. That means you go through each sector, look who has the most ships in that sector and that player gets an additional four points. If players are tied in a sector, then each among player among the tied players gets four points. The player with the most points wins the game. If there is a tie among those, the player with the most stars wins the game. If that is still tied, then use the turn order. The player among those who is first in turn order wins the game. There are a few more things I haven't evaded haven't mentioned uh, in this explanation video for which you'll need to check the rulebook 
First of all, for a two-player game, there are a few additional rules for setup and for playing. Check the variant section at the back of the rulebook for that. And also check any special effects at the back of the rulebook. At the back of the rulebook, there are a number of tables, and you can look up various things there, what they do. There's also a glossary, which you can check out. And there's also strategy tips. These are especially useful for starting players to avoid beginning mistakes. Have fun playing Galactic Era.